As part of Scotland's ongoing public health harm reduction strategy, has the time come to clamp down on the marketing and promotion of alcohol? The Scottish Government is in the midst of a consultation of measures which, at their most extreme, would ban alcohol advertising in the media and public spaces, restrict the visibility of booze in shops and supermarkets and outlaw alcohol sponsoring of sports events and festivals. The consultation, which runs until the 9th of March, is already meeting with strong opposition. We debated some of the arguments with Alison Douglas, who is the Chief Executive of Alcohol Focus Scotland, and Ewan MacDonald Russell, who is the Deputy Head of the Scottish Retail Consortium. Alison, why is this consultation taking place? The evidence that alcohol marketing significantly drives consumption has been building for some considerable time. And we now have evidence of a causal connection between the exposure of children and young people and them starting to drink, them drinking more and them going on to develop an alcohol problem. So we know that marketing does have an effect and that's why the World Health Organization recommends comprehensive bans on alcohol marketing as part of an approach to, to reduce alcohol consumption and harm. Some of the issues being consulted on are really quite radical, are they not? They, they are radical, but of course, you know, we do have a precedent in the regulation on tobacco where over a number of years um, we have implemented a comprehensive ban on tobacco marketing and that has been significant in reducing the use of, of uh, cigarettes in Scotland and across the UK. Uh, Ewan, what's your reaction to that? I guess there's two things. Firstly, I don't think we can really draw a direct comparison between tobacco and alcohol. They're obviously massively different products that, that are dealt with and managed in different ways. And of course, drinking alcohol in moderation is something many people enjoy. Indeed, promoting alcohol is something, of course, the Scottish Government are very happy to do as part of a food and drink strategy. So, so I think trying to align the two is, is a little bit unfair. There's a bigger problem here. This consultation is massively flawed from a process perspective. The Scottish Government has a regulation approach, which means it's meant to consult with all the industry stakeholders. It's meant to speak to everyone. And that way you get a balanced perspective. The government haven't done that here. And that's why I'm afraid we have proposals which you described as radical. We describe as unworkable. Uh, Alison, how would you respond to that? Unworkable uh, proposals because of lack of consultation. Well, I think we've got to remember how significant the alcohol problem is in Scotland. It's responsible for one in 15 of all deaths. And yet the information that we have on alcohol harm is very limited. The industry themselves obstruct attempts to provide that information and have for a very long time claimed that they would provide that information on their products and have failed to do that. So I think, you know, regulation has to be the way to go and there's precedent here internationally. And as I say, the World Health Organization strongly recommend this as part of an approach. Let's not forget that alcohol deaths in Scotland have increased by 22% in the last two years. And people are saying this could be us going back 30 years in terms of alcohol harm. We can't allow that to happen. And so we need to learn from good practice from other countries and bring in comprehensive regulation. Ewan, do you think Scotland does have a problem with alcohol? Absolutely, of course we do. Um, and I wish it was as straightforward as there was a silver bullet that would solve this. We know that's not true. My members don't oppose good regulation. We worked really closely to implement minimum unit pricing. We work on a whole range of measures to support this. And where we get good proposals, which are based on, on quite specific evidence, not broad evidence, we're actually really happy to work on that and engage in a constructive discussion. What we've got a problem with is when measures are, are brought forward in this manner without this, and, and we get sort of something like we would not be allowed to have a, a whiskey branded keychain. We might not be able to have a wine o'clock card in a stationery shop. These are measures which I don't think there's any evidence for. And that actually, so I think, harms Alison's case. We're not seeing measures that are specific and targeted and focused, which we could work with. Actually, we're seeing a kind of sort of everything thrown at the wall, sees what sticks. I don't think that's going to lead us to the right outcomes. And that doesn't help us solve the problems we really want to tackle. And Alison, that, that, that's being mentioned quite a lot. Examples of, of advertising on, on, on sweatshirts on key rings, on, on T-shirts hanging in windows, I mean, whatever it might be. Um, is that what you're talking about, banning all of that? Well, each and every um, form of marketing 
um, helps promote and normalize alcohol consumption. So, you know, this isn't just about protecting children and young people. All of us are influenced by marketing. Um, you mentioned there about gift cards. I mean, th this is this is the state that we find ourselves in where it's actually pretty hard to find a, a, a card which doesn't refer to alcohol. But these pro proposals are principally about branded marketing because that's the, the, the marketing that really has the, the biggest impact that is, is driving loyalty to particular products and brands and is sustained over, over that sustains that uh, loyalty over decades. And that's why it's also really, really important that we include brand sharing in this. We've seen examples internationally, for example, the Six Nations, where uh, companies will use their their no alcohol brands in a market which already regulates alcohol marketing, such as Ireland or France. Um, so we see Guinness 0.0, .0 being used in, in Ireland uh, to circumvent their alcohol marketing regulations. And that's really why you need to take a comprehensive approach, because okay. we're talking about an endlessly creative industry here, which can find ways of getting around regulations where those regulations are partial. So Ewan, what, what, what could be done? You, you acknowledge that something could be done. What, what would you suggest? I think the first thing, to be honest, is we need to, to, to get rid of this consultation and actually start the process again and look at these individually. So it might be this stuff within this, but I think what we haven't acknowledged is what's the cumulative effect. One of the big things for my members is this talk about hiding alcohol or putting alcohol somewhere else in the shop. Already in Scotland, we have incredibly strict licensing rules about where you can put alcohol in shop. We've also got deposit return scheme that's going to change how we organize shops in one thing. High fat, salt and sugar restrictions probably change what else we can put in shop. There's, there's a limit to what can be done. And I think the challenge here is, with, is to look at this in a silo issue of just alcohol. Actually, we need to have a kind of whole population approach on public health and the interactions with the economy. It's worth remembering if we don't have decent economy, if we don't have things that eradicate poverty, that drive local economies, actually a lot of the things that cause, sadly, alcohol abuse are related to those wider systemic problems. It's not just as simple as the product. There's a reason that, sadly, people do drink too much when they shouldn't. And Alison, would you be thinking, you've mentioned the, 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 the tackling smoking, would you be uh, envisaging that uh, alcohol would be sold much the same way as cigarettes are? Behind screens, you have to ask for a specific brand. Is, is that what you think? Well, I think it's really interesting that when we ask children and young people and we ask people who are in recovery about how alcohol is treated, that they are the ones who point out the, the kind of radical difference in how alcohol is treated compared to tobacco, despite the fact that, you know, it's a harmful product, it's a carcinogen, it's toxic, it, it causes harm to um fetuses in the womb so you know it's it's a it's a dangerous product and yet it is very uh, widely marketed with very limited restrictions a so-called self-regulatory system at the moment so what? what we are saying is that people should be uh, able to go and buy alcohol when they are browse alcohol when they actively intend to do so but they shouldn't be um they, they shouldn't be exposed to it unless they want to be. And Ewan, what, what would the impact, do you think, of these proposals be on the Scottish economy, which is, it's a multi-million pound industry? So, so I can't really speak for producers, but obviously if you start taking away the, the iconic brands, particularly something like Scotch whisky, which is a huge export, a huge driver of growth, that's obviously its impact. But for my members, I can tell you it will cost tens of millions of pounds to refit our stores, leaving aside the complexity and the logistical challenge. Remember, what, what Alison's proposing would require a different license application for every single shop in Scotland. That's about 12, 13,000 premises. Um, and actually, I don't know what necessarily be accomplished. In a lot of cases, there would only be a small part of the shop that already can sell alcohol. So I guess this comes back to the, it's really helpful actually Alison and me discussing this properly, us putting our points of view. I just wish the government had taken that approach first of actually getting both sides of the argument rather than sort of grabbing one side of it, throwing it into a consultation, and then we have to be more destructive than I'd really like to be. And finally, and very briefly, if you will, Alison, um, some of these proposals are out with the powers of the Scottish government anyway. Yes, I mean, the, the Scottish government um, have consulted uh, on on all all restrictions, not just those that were are within their gift, but um, you know, hopefully they can negotiate with the UK government. And there we shall leave it. Thank you both for your time this evening and for joining us in Scotland tonight.